In this video, we're going to discuss lipids. And the first lipid we're going to discuss is fats. So lipids are nonpolar molecules. Your body produces a great deal of nonpolar components, and they generally get classified in terms of lipids. But the one we think of most commonly is a fat. And a fat has a general structure of three carbons. Each carbon has an oxygen coming off. This is actually glycerol. So this propen 1, 2, 3 triol is glycerol. What actually happens though is that this reacts with a fatty acid, which we'll describe in a moment, to make a triester. This triester is a fat. It is a triglyceride. Fats are composed of a couple different parts. So as we said, there's a glycerol, which is a tri-alcohol, and a fatty acid, which is just a carboxylic acid with a long nonpolar chain that may or may not have double bonds. Well, carboxylic acid plus an alcohol makes an ester. Three of these fatty acids combine with the glycerol to make our triglyceride, our fat. These fatty acid chains can be mixed. They can be the same. They can be two of the same and one that's different. There's lots of combinations. Different creatures make different combinations, and different parts of cells make different combinations. Most cells have a large variety of them. They can be saturated, meaning they have no double bonds. They could also be monounsaturated, meaning they have one double bond. And then they could be polyunsaturated. Truth is, those terms apply to the entire fat. If you have a saturated fat, there are no double bonds in it. So a saturated fat would look like that, no double bonds at all. If you have only one in your entire fat, you're monounsaturated. And if you have two or more spread out among all the chains, you are a polyunsaturated. So in our case, I drew this with three. Important point is that your double bonds always cis carbon-carbon bonds. Naturally occurring fats always have cis double bonds if they have an unsaturation, if they have a double bond. This is just part of how biology creates them, and it is the naturally occurring form of fat. So when you hear trans fats, well, the reason that was kind of a health food craze and worry for a little bit was normally fats are cis. So if you have ones that are trans, they're not what our body is used to seeing from nature. The truth is, we've been making trans fats as part of processed food for a century, and it hasn't really seemed to cause any problems in that time. We never had any real significant evidence that there was anything wrong with them, but it was a very popular thing to make health foods for for a little while. Uh, they've done some more research since then. There's not really good convincing evidence that it is or isn't harmful. It just seems to be fats. They continue to work at it, but it's kind of why trans fats have died down as a health food thing. What actually happens for those? Where does it come from? Well, hydrogenation. Double bonds plus hydrogen, you can have those hydrogens come up and they will add across that double bond. You can get rid of double bonds by hydrogenating. It is very cheap to buy corn oil. Oils are polyunsaturated or monounsaturated fats. Oils tend to be unsaturated. And solids, like butter and lard, tend to be saturated. When you have long carbon chains with no double bonds, they can align really easily. So if I have my esters, 
These are very easily lined up with each other. And if you had another fat, which I'm just going to quickly draw kind of like that, they would line up well. And if you had another fat, they could line up well. The nice flat chains that come from being saturated make it really easy to align and attach to nearby fats. These have very good intramolecular forces. It's a lot of nonpolar. And so they tend to be more solid. But a double bond, well, we kind of misdraw it here. So let's take this middle chain. Double bonds don't really look that way. The reality is that they kick off at other angles. We draw them zigzag left to right for simplicity, but the truth is when you put a double bond in one of these chains, it bends the direction that the rest of the chain goes. This means you don't line up very nicely. You stick out at odd angles, you can't align everything, and you don't line up very well with your next fat. Saturated fats stick together well, unsaturated fats don't. And so if you don't stick together well, you're more likely to be liquid, or oil in this case. And if you do stick together well, you're more likely to be a solid. So back to the hydrogenation, what actually happens is it's cheap to acquire corn oil, especially in the U.S. due to the subsidies. But it's very liquidy. If you've ever made cookies, you use butter and the cookies are reasonably firm. If you've ever made brownies, you use oil and the brownies are soft and malleable. The fat is what's setting them up. By using an oily fat, you make a bendable food product. If you want to make an energy bar and you're going to use some oils, well, canola oil and the like is super cheap, but it's too liquidy. And so we thicken it. We hydrogenate to destroy some of those double bonds. As we get rid of some of the double bonds, the oil gets thicker. It turns more solid. And so you can add hydrogen. You can get just a little bit added or a lot, depending on how much you want to add. Add enough, and you just turn it into a saturated fat. But if you don't go all the way, you partially hydrogenate. And if you look at a lot of food products, you will see partially hydrogenated whatever oil, soybean oil or canola oil or grapeseed oil, all sorts of things. Partial hydrogenation means you get rid of some of your double bonds, but not all. The problem is that during that process, sometimes one hydrogen will attach. This lets the chain spin around because that bond is broke for a little bit. There's a plus charge sitting on the carbon. There's no double bond. You're free to spin. And trans is actually less problematic space-wise than a cis bond. And so that tail tends to spin around. Eventually that hydrogen breaks back off because it never completed the second addition. And your double bond reforms. This is how you get trans fats. Processed foods can have trans fats because of this partial hydrogenation can cause the double bonds to twist and break for a little while. And so this is where our trans fats actually come from. But this is the idea of a fat. It is a glycerol, three separate fatty acids of any mix attached to make a triglyceride, a triester. These tails tend to be usually 12 to 24 carbons and usually even. Due to how biology attaches and removes the carbons, they tend to come in sets of two. And so it is very rare to see an odd numbered fat chain. They almost are always even. Shorter chains tend to be smaller plant things. Longer chains tend to be more lardy and blubbery fats on animals. Most that we would run into in the human body are tend to be up to 18. But especially in like whale blubber, you can get out to 24 carbons fairly easily. Just different types of fat need different materials for their insulating properties. Well, those double bonds, let's do a short one. Two, four, six, eight. There aren't really 10 carbon fats all that often, but let's, let's make one. Except in this case, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's do this. IUPAC wise, we'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is a 10 carbon long chain. It is a deck. It has a double bond at the seven. It is a seven ene oic acid. Deck seven ene oic acid. Well, especially when you get much longer chains, IUPAC gets a little more clumsy, but on top of it, fats just have been around a long time. They were one of the first things we really studied in detail, and so they still keep their old nomenclature. Nutritional science really hasn't caught up very much from the old days in terms of terminology. And so when we have our fat here, instead of numbering it the way IUPAC does, fats with double bonds were marked from the end of the chain. The term was omega. So alpha and omega, beginning and end. From the end of the chain, three carbons back is the double bond. So this is an omega-3, 10-carbon fatty acid. If you were told you had a omega-3, 6, 14-carbon fatty acid. Well, we wouldn't need the full name. We could figure out what that structure was. We'll start at the far end and say, well, carbon 2, carbon 3 have a double bond of 4, carbon 5, carbon 6 have a double bond to 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and put my carboxylic acid on the 14th. So one, two, three from the end, four, five, six from the end, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. This is an omega three six fourteen carbon fatty acid. So the omega terms are still used. For the most part, we are able to make and biosynthesize every fat we need, except for a few omega threes. So if you've ever heard the term that fish are brain food, that came about because fish are high in omega-3 fatty acids, and we cannot make them. We lack those components. And so we must acquire linolinic and linoleic, I believe are the two of them, of uh, omega-3 fatty acids. We use them for our brain, which is why they're vital and why the term brain food came about but we have to acquire them. They are essential fatty acids.